Hey everyone, Kieran King here. Today we are talking about exchange traded notes or ETNs. First of all, I just want to say thanks to one of my subscribers for requesting this video. If any of you have any other requests for financial related videos, please, please do write them down in the comments and I will hopefully get around to doing them. So exchange traded notes. I assume you already know what a stock exchange is, essentially a public market for certain stocks. The next thing we need to discuss is what a stock market index is. Now, an index is basically something that measures a particular segment of a financial market. For example, you have something called the S&P 500 index, which looks at the 500 of the largest companies in the US and spits out a value. Another example here in the UK might be the FTSE 100 index, which tracks the top 100 companies listed on the London Stock Exchange and again gives us a value we can understand and say that group of stocks together is worth X. So let's go back to exchange traded notes or ETNs. ETNs are a type of bond. This means they are a type of debt instrument whereby they are issued to investors and give those investors a set return. So who are the players here? We have a financial institution over here and this might be an investment bank or something like that. And we have our investors or investor over here. The financial institution will issue these ETNs to the investor who will pay a fee for it and who hopes to achieve a return. However, the main difference between an ETN and a bond is that the ETN tracks the performance of a particular index, such as the S&P 500, for example. So if a particular index is set to give a 5% return a year, then the ETN will pay out a 5% return to its investors. However, here is the strange bit. The financial institution can actually do anything they want with the money they collect. They don't have to buy stocks in the index it tracks. All it is doing is promising a return based on index and how it does that is up to them. So it could take that money and put it all into Bitcoin and no one will be the wiser as long as it gives their investors the return of the index it tracks. If the index goes up in value, then in theory, so does the ETN. Similarly, if the index goes down in value, then the ETN will give less return or maybe no return at all. They are directly linked. Now, this ETN could potentially be quite lucrative for the bank or the institution that issues it. As an example, let's say an investor pays $100 for an ETN that matures within a year. The financial institution that has issued this ETN takes the money and trades options or derivatives for a year and makes a return of a hundred percent. Okay, so it's now got $200 from that $100 of investment. However, the index that this specific ETN tracks creates a return of 10% a year. So after a year, the financial institution pays $110 back to the investor, which is 10% and maybe minus some fees. So perhaps it's $108. It gives back to the investor. Yet through its own investment activities, it basically made 100% on the invested money and they have basically kept 90% for themselves. Now, another thing about ETNs is that they don't pay regular interest payments to the investor like bonds. They simply pay out any returns plus the principal when the ETN matures. However, people don't usually hold these ETNs until they mature. No, they usually trade them with other investors on stock exchanges. And they do that because the value of the ETN will rise and fall according to that particular index it tracks, essentially creating a market for them, just like normal stocks. So I hope that makes sense. Now let's look at other things that can affect the value of these ETNs. One thing is the credit rating of the institution that issues them. If the institution drops a credit rating from, from something like AAA to AA, then it may have an impact on the value of this ETN. Moreover, Maybe an institution doesn't issue an ETN one year, making them less in supply and the existing ones potentially more valuable. On the flip side, if lots are issued and there is more supply than demand, then the price may conversely drop. So there are lots of things that can impact its price. Now you may have heard of ETS before or exchange traded funds. These are similar in that they track certain indexes. However, they differ in the sense that investing in an ETF means you're essentially buying a group of stocks it supports, not simply gaining a return if it does well. Now this might seem confusing, but I'm gonna go into ETFs in another video. So for now, back to ETNs. So why do people invest in ETNs? One, there is a reduced tracking error. So what does this mean? Well, as the return the ETN makes completely matches the returns of the underlying index, then it means you are getting a very good match to a particular index if that is what your investment style is. It differs from ETFs, as with ETFs, you have to constantly rebalance portfolios to match the index, which may result in some errors. 
The second benefit is a tax benefit. ETNs don't give up regular interest payments like normal bonds or dividends like ETFs do or other stocks. This means that investors only pay capital gains tax when the ETN matures. In some jurisdictions around the world, this type of long-term capital gains tax is usually less than short-term capital gains tax that is required to be paid on any interest payments made to the investor. I hope that makes sense. The third interesting thing about ETNs is that they allow for certain exposure. They often offer more access to certain in indexes compared to ETFs, as the ETN is just promising to pay a return that index generates rather than investing in the underlying stocks of that index in itself. Now, whenever looking at investment, there are always benefits, but there are always risks as well. And in terms of risks, there are quite a few. Firstly, is default risk of the issuing organization. There is always a risk that the issuer, the investment bank, the financial institution cannot pay back the returns or even pay back the principal to the investor no matter how big or established there are, there is always that risk. Secondly, as an investor, you must understand that you don't have any claim over the underlying assets because there are none, unlike an ETF. You are basically buying an unsecured bond. And thirdly, there is also liquidity risk. Many ETNs don't have high trading volume, so selling your ETN to another trader when and where you want might be quite difficult, depending. And there are plenty of other advantages and disadvantages to ETNs, but hopefully that has given you a good basic insight into them as financial instruments. If you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe and check out my other videos on my channel. And as always, if you have any comments or questions, please put them in the comments section below and I will get around to answering them. All the best everyone, see you all soon.